Welcome back to Gruber Motor Company. As electric vehicles continue to replace transportation, there are a number of disruptions occurring, and today we would like to address the EV service delivery system, which is also under attack. These are the service options evolving. One, factory service. Two, independent service. And three, specialty service. Let's explore factory service for a moment. This is typically the first introduction a vehicle owner has to any kind of service experience. Since the majority of repairs are performed under warranty, free of charge, by the same company that made the car. In the case of Tesla, which chose to bypass a well-established dealer and sales service network, providing instead factory direct sales and service, they had to create a service delivery network from scratch. There are just under 200 global service centers available to Tesla vehicle owners, and the list keeps growing. Offering an aggressive eight-year warranty on most of the drivetrain and vehicle components keeps their service centers very busy, and the relationship between owners and Tesla service organizations is a long one. The newcomer emerging EV manufacturers are facing not only vehicle design and production ramp issues, but a yet-to-be-created and instituted service delivery network. In mature markets, they would normally rely on existing independent service organizations and outsource their service delivery until they can develop their own service centers. Unfortunately, this option does not exist yet since qualified and knowledgeable independent service options like us are not yet available globally. The existing internal combustion engine producers migrating into the EV space have a matured existing dealer network, providing not only sales, but most of the required service. Although on a surface, this looks to give the migrating ICE to EV incumbent auto manufacturers an edge over Tesla and other new EV producers, which are struggling with scaling and service delivery, retraining and learning curve issues will most likely offset any advantage due to the significant differences between ICE and EVs. You simply cannot take the average skilled mechanic and turn them into an EV savvy technician overnight. Let's look at independent service for a moment. This level of repairs and service is provided by the very few shops that start seeing customers that have moved out of warranty and are seeking solutions, feeling the sting of high priced repairs. Take Tesla's worst case scenario, a drivetrain battery replacement on a Model S coming in at $22,000 to $25,000 for an aged car with a matching resale value of not much more than this repair cost. To date, there are so few qualified EV shops like this for expensive repairs like battery and electronics. EVs are routinely shipped to these shops and demand is very high resulting in lead time issues. Since parts, and especially service documentation support for independence is often spotty or non-existent, as OEMs consider this level of service competitive, shops in the independent space have to develop advanced skills well beyond the average mechanic at the factory service centers, including reverse engineering skills, software skills, and being able to do electronics repairs right down to component level. Now let's look at specialty service shops for a moment. In the internal combustion engine world, shops like this specialize in specific high volume repairs, which include tire repairs, discount tire, big O, where high volume activity provides scale of economies not available to even the OEM shops, and skill levels are typically superior to OEM service centers. We expect these types of shops to survive this disruption since the wheel in transportation is not going away anytime soon. Suspension and alignment shops. Since the mechanical items in a vehicle with wheels still depends on bushings, control arms, axle shafts, CV joints, all wearing with use and age, these types of independent shops, although often competing with factory service, do seem to have an ongoing niche market. Transmission repair shops. Shops like this are able to repair down to individual parts level on internal combustion engine vehicles, unlike their factory service counterparts, where swapping this assembly is far more cost effective. 
the need for transmission shops disappears since electric vehicles do not have a transmission. Now, they may morph into drivetrain service shops, which now require them to be able to rebuild a three-phase AC induction motor and repair a three-phase DC to AC inverter full of electronics. Then we have collision paint and body shops. On the surface, these types of shops seem essential since we will still have distracted humans piloting multi-ton projectiles. As self-driving technology takes over, however, and steering wheels are removed with cars piloting themselves, these types of shops could migrate into other aftermarket activities like paint improvement, PPF applications, vehicle wraps, etc. Lube shops equipped to handle the multitude of fluid systems in an ICE vehicle, ranging from transmission to engine to fuel delivery, these shops will not survive since in an EV they have nothing to pivot to. Exhaust specialty shops equipped to handle the multitude of post-combustion functions from pollution control to noise abatement in an ICE vehicle, these shops will not survive since in an EV these systems are not present. Tesla has recently more than doubled production capacity with the completion and launching of Giga Berlin and Austin. The strain on Tesla's service delivery, already barely manageable, will become more pronounced as even more vehicles are produced. We predict Tesla will be forced to expand their service delivery, shifting to outsourcing, not only collision-related services, which is already in place, but including selective outsourcing arrangements with shops like ours already skilled in working on EVs and Teslas. It will then be in their best interest to provide training, documentation, service procedures, and full parts support to these independents to meet the increased demand for service, which will resolve bottlenecks and alleviate long service lead times. As other new EV producers follow suit, a whole new cottage industry of independent service organizations will emerge, now fully supported by OEMs and in partnership. I'm Pete Gruber. Thank you for joining us for another video segment. Make sure to check us out on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Patreon. And as always, we appreciate you joining us for these video segments. Thank you.